This video demonstrates how to replace the water in the pump with the coating material. First, let's go over the filtration on this pump because all filters must be cleaned before the airless is operated to protect against contaminants that may clog the system. One filter can be accessed by unscrewing the manifold. First, make sure the prime valve is set to the pressure release position. Note that these manifolds are designed to be hand tightened only. Once cleaned, the filter can be reinserted and hand tightened. The next filter is the rock guard, which is located at the bottom of the pickup tube. This filter should always be checked to make sure it's in place so a foreign object cannot be sucked into the pump and cause damage. The gun itself has the pressure rating of the gun recorded on the pump. Make sure the pressure rating of the gun is the same or greater than the pressure rating for the line and for the maximum amount of pressure the pump can build. There is also a safety trigger lock here, which can be activated and deactivated easily. It is very important that you know where this is and how to use it. This is the tip and housing for the spray gun. The safety guard is on the housing and is designed to stop your hand from getting too close to the outlet on the tip. This is the tip itself, and the size of the tip is recorded on it. This one is a 415. You double the first number to find the size of the fan when sprayed at one foot from the substrate, so this tip would create an 8-inch fan at one foot. The second number represents how big the orifice is and is measured in thousands of an inch, so this orifice is 15 thousandths of an inch. This is the throat seal, also known as piston lube, which is used to stop paint from sticking to the packing rods. This is applied sparingly, inserting just enough to fill up the little cup located just inside the fluid cylinder. The material that is to be sprayed should always be strained prior to use to avoid picking up contaminants that could clog the system. To strain the material, tape the strainer bag to the bucket so it can't shift during use but leave a small section of the bucket free from the strainer bag to allow space for the pickup tube to be inserted into the strained paint. This process ensures all paint that enters the pickup tube is strained. Paint can now be run through the airless. Because the system was flushed with water, we know that water is still in the pump and the lines. To prime the airless, the water must be purged and replaced with a coating material. To run paint through the prime circuit, the prime valve is set to prime mode and the power to the pump is turned on. Now water is being pushed out of the pump as paint is drawn into the pump. This should be continued until paint comes out of the prime circuit instead of water. Once paint starts to come out, the prime tube is placed into the supply bucket with the pickup tube to allow the coating material to be circulated for a few moments, which will eliminate any air bubbles caught in the prime circuit. Now that the prime circuit is complete, the pressure control valve is turned all the way off and the prime or pressure release valve is turned to the sideways position. The gun is pointed into the supply bucket with the trigger activated and the pressure control is slowly turned up until all of the water is pushed out of the paint line. Now that paint is in the paint line, the gun is aimed at the strainer bag in the supply bucket, releasing the pressure. The pressure control valve is now turned up, allowing the coating material to circulate for a few moments to eliminate any air bubbles. To prepare the gun for use, lock the trigger. Then install the tip housing and place the fan in the desired position. The pressure control could now be turned up to the point where the coating material is atomized. At this point, the airless is ready to be used.